Hi friends, this is Joe. This is the Decahedron RPG podcast. This is episode 139, I think. It might be 140. It's right around there. Um, and this is going to be a short one. I've been doing the RPG a, RPG a Day Challenge episodes, uh, and I'm doing one of those every single day. So between that and I've been working for the last eight days straight, uh, this is going to be a short one. And I'm going to be reading off notes. So if you hear my paper crinkling on the podcast or on YouTube and you see me looking down, that's what's happening. So what happened? I was, I do this sometimes actually. I was sitting in front of my computer and I said, let me describe a monster, you know, that I know and describe it in my own words to one of those AI art generators and see what it produces. See, you know, the image that it produces. And I did that, and I described this creature, and it produced this amazingly cute creature. And in fact, if you're on YouTube, you can see it right now. If you're listening to the podcast, I didn't leave you out. It is this episode's cover art. So you can still see the creature. I saw this, and I was like, wow, that's really cute, and I like it. And so I made this monster concept around it and I made using monster in air quotes because really as I developed it it's more of a NPC race um so then you got are orcs monsters or are they a race what an interesting question so this falls in that kind of that category and I made them not so much as a combat threat but as a role-playing challenge maybe a trick or a trap depending on how you like to look at things um, because when I was looking at them, I was like, that's so incredibly cute that people will see that and they'll want to feed it. And so I turned that into an ability. I turned that into like a limited version of the charm spell. <laughs> so that when you first encounter these creatures, you've got to make a save and throw. And if you fail that save and throw, you have to give them like three days of rations. Now, originally I said half your rations. I thought that was a bit extreme. Three days. Um. Because I, I'm one of those GMs that if you're doing wilderness exploration, you better be carrying rations because if you're not, you're going to starve. <laughs> um, and so this is actually a resource drain because it forces you to give up some of those rations. And I didn't want to make it half because then that's almost penalizing players that plan ahead. And I don't believe in doing that. So three days. Um, so you should plan for some overage right or getting lost or whatever so yeah that's what i finally went with um for a name now generally i don't name monsters when you come across a monster in my world i just describe it and it's up to you to eventually give it a name although if i describe a troll you might think it's a troll or you might thinking it's an ogre my description for those sound an awful lot alike uh, and when you go to the town and tell them what you saw Maybe they'll use what name they use locally uh, or what they think it might be based on what they know is in the area. But they might be wrong. Who knows? Anyway, so for a working name, though, I call it the fluffy cuteness. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling a little silly that day. Let me tell you a little bit about the fluffy cuteness. The fl fluffy cuteness is a diminutive humanoid creature with seemingly cheerful demeanor. It's covered in a soft plush fur and has large, innocent-looking eyes. Despite its cuddly appearance, the fluffy cuteness is a conover that preys on rodents and other small animals. I'm realizing that this is an earlier draft that I ended up printing. It's not the latest version. Oh, well, we're going to roll with it. These creatures live in small family groups, usually in secluded burrows or nests. Fluffy cutenesses communicate in a high-pitched, chirping language unique to their kind. They have no interest in establishing political relationships with other species, but will approach individuals or small groups in hopes of obtaining food. They are generally docile and nonviolent to other intelligent species. If threatened, their first instinct is to flee unless they're protecting their young. The young will always flee. Their amazing agility and great strength gives them a plus two bonus to surprise. Not great strength, great stealth, I can read. <laughs> uh, give them a plus two bonus to surprise. Perhaps the most peculiar aspect of the fluffy cuteness is its innate charm. Any creature who lays, arm, uh, who lays eyes on one must make a save and throw or succumb to its allure. I would treat that as a gaze attack if you're in a game that has that kind of thing. <laughs> 
Uh, the transfer is not one-sided, however. The charmed victim receives the benefits of a blessed spell for a full week. It's a little, you know, a little giving you a little something for losing some of your rations there. I could see some players trying to power game that then, right? Stripping themselves down to only a few days' worth of rations and going there and giving them up to get the blessings and get back. <laughs> Um, anyway, anyone stealing food from a fluffy cuteness is cursed with a blight spell for a full week. Blight is what Rule Cyclopedia calls the reverse of bless. I think other versions just call it curse. Anyway, anyone stealing food from a fluffy cuteness is cursed with a blight spell for a full week. At the GM's option, anyone so heartless as to kill such an adorable creature will also be affected by the curse. Yeah, if you kill a fluffy cuteness, you're, you're a bad dude. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, right? Um, cute little creature you see it you're so charmed you're so oh let me give it food let me feed it type thing and uh you end up giving it three days worth of rations uh but in turn you get a bless funny thing is when i showed this to james his first question was what kind of treasure does it have <laughs> i'm telling you he's a munchkin nobody believes me <laughs> uh i love you james you know he really did ask that though uh, oh, the other thing that I left out of there is uh, technologically, they don't have any metalworking or anything. So all their weapons are like uh, wooden spears, clubs, staves. Uh, like the spears don't even have metal spearheads or not even stone spearheads. It will just be like uh, one of those things where you put it in the fire and you carve down the, the point itself, uh, the wood to a point. As for stats, again, I'm using old D&D rules Wikipedia format for stats. Armor class 6, which is 15 in Ascending Armor class games, which I like Ascending Armor class better, personally, but that's me. Hit dice, 1d4 plus 1. They're small little things. Uh, move, 90. Attack, 2 claws or by weapon. Uh, for the claws, I said 1d3, 1d3, or again, by weapon. Number pairing, uh, 1d2 or 1d6 in the lair. Because 1d6 will. So it's either a mated pair, an individual, a mated pair, or a family unit, a mated pair, and they're young. Save as a first level thief. Morale is three, nine if protecting their young. Morale is why I went with old school DD for this, by the way. I think, I don't know why the morale rules fell out of flavor. I think they are one of the best things about basic DD. Treasure type Q and J. Um, yeah, it's not much. It's just a few coins is where it boils down to. Intelligence is 8. Alignment is neutral. XP value is 5. Again, they're not a combat and challenge. Uh, mas uh, monster type is humanoid, rare. And their terrain is open, settled, swamp, or woods. If this were tunnels and trolls, I think I would give them an MR of about 25. Again, it's not about the combat. It's about that charm ability. Oh, yeah, the other thing I would do in... Tunnels and Trolls is I would give them an armor value of maybe three, four, um, not necessarily representing their toughness of their hide or anything like that, because they're cute little fluffy things. <laughs> but uh, to represent their ability to dodge that much damage, which I know you're saying, but isn't that already incorporated in the monster rating? Yeah, but this is just something to make them a little more interesting. Why not? So anyway, that's the fluffy cuteness. If you want a printed thing with a picture in the stats well a pdf i will make one of those drop me a line let me know you want one i'll send it to you maybe i'll put up on the discord if you plan on using this or you think you might use it or use it as inspiration for something of your own let me know i love to know that people take this junk that i make and and do something fun with it so yeah let me know if you do use it in the game let me know how it went i would love to know that oh and an adventure seed so maybe if I were going to use these in, an in a foreign adventure, I would have the party come across a small settlement, like a really tiny village, Hamlet, Thorpe, whatever, maybe just a farm out in the middle of nowhere. But a family of fluffy cutenesses has recently moved in and they're all using their charm ability on the various family members and the family is losing all their food. Now, they don't want the fluffy cutenesses killed because they're so cute. <laughs> but they want them out of their hair. So it's the party's job to come up with some way of getting rid of the fluffy cutenesses. Um, yeah, I think that'd be a fun little adventure. 
Let me know what you think. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Tekihijin RPG podcast. Please come back.